but certainly psalm as well. I just felt the call uh, in the moment to do something different. Normally, uh, when I come up here, I, uh, and when we come to church, you expect to hear me expounding on Scripture and what Scripture, uh, and, and me explaining what Scripture is saying to us today. Uh, this is usually done in what we would call a sermon or in our roles in the message. And in this format, we look to the pastor to be the prophet, so to speak. And there's nothing wrong with that. As God does call people to speak God's word and to challenge the people. However, today, I want to do something just a little different. As it is also true that God does not just speak to me. God speaks to all of you as well. So today we are together going to do a variation of <coughs> Lectio Divina. How many of you have heard of Lectio Divina? Good. Uh, you have, Sam? I have, but I can't remember the definition of that. Fair, fair enough. It is, it is Latin for divine or sacred reading. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to read together today uh, part of today's passage from the Gospel of Luke, and we are going to meditate on it. Now this may sound like, are you, you're probably thinking, like, are you kidding me? Like, you want me to actually think through the scripture today? Yes. But less thinking through it and more letting it talk to you. The idea of Lectio Divina is that Scripture is living, it's breathing, that God speaks to us through it. And so the idea is allowing the Scripture, rather than analyzing the Scripture, allowing the Scripture to speak to you. So what I would ask you to do, if you're able, is to open your pew Bible to Luke chapter 4, verses 4 through 21. The funny thing is, is today's kind of a different day as it is, with the snowstorm and, uh, and things kind of being a little different, and it kind of fits that we're doing something different today. Luke 4, chapter, right, Luke chapter 4, verses 14 through 21. Now, we're not going to actually uh, start with uh, verse 14, but we're going to start with, um, we're going to start with uh, Jesus' words themselves. But you'll, you'll see where they are. They're within 14 to 21. But before we do, I just want us to close our eyes and prepare for God's word to speak to us this morning. Again, the Spirit says to us in Isaiah chapter 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Be still. scripture. And you can read along and listen carefully. Starting with verse 17. The scroll of Isaiah the prophet was handed to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where this was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon 
upon me. For he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. What is the text saying? What words, phrases, or sentences are jumping out at you? As they come, you can feel free to speak them aloud, or you can say them silently. What is the text saying? The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. to read it again. This time, focus on what is the text saying to you personally or to Harmony Hill as a community. Feel free when I am done reading it to share it out loud or just reflect silently on it. The scroll of Isaiah the prophet was intended to him he unrolled the scroll and found a place where this was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. We could read the scripture in a different way. <clears throat> the Spirit of the Lord is upon us because he has anointed us to bring good news to the poor he has sent us to, break, to proclaim relief to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind. Let the oppressed go free and proclaim that this year is the year of the Lord's favor. Thank you, Sam. And in that vein, body of Christ,
makes me think on uh, the context of today's time. What does good news look to the poor? Who are the poor? What does it look like to proclaim release to the captives? And who are the captives? It makes me think, who are the blind? Who are the oppressed? And how would it look like in today's time frame to proclaim the name of the Lord's name? to read it one more time. This time, silently focus, or out loud, on what difference this passage will make in your life, or what difference will it make in the life of this congregation. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where this was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. And I think we need to remember that too, that there is a time to do and to work, and there's a time to sit down and let God work through what you and silently pray on what the Spirit has revealed to us out of the living Word. spoken to each one of us. And whether we hear it on a day-to-day -day basis or not, you are speaking to each one of us always, leading us in the direction that you are calling us to go. If we would just open ourselves up to your direction and silence ourselves from the clutter and the noise of the world, we would be able to discern
discern the direction you were calling us in. Build us up into a people who respond to your word, who respond to your direction, and who proclaim the good news, whatever that looks like to whomever you call us to proclaim it to.